Hello friends and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to make this super nice and simple box belt pouch. It comes in two sizes, there's a large one and a smaller one. And this is a really great, super simple beginner tutorial. If you've never worked with leather before, this is the type of project that you can do. But if you've worked with leather before, it's also a super nice, quick and easy pattern if you just need an extra pocket when you're going to Ren Fair or a convention, or you just want to add that nice extra detail to your kit. In this tutorial, I talk about some basic tools, processes, and how to do a basic saddle stitch. If you've never heard of any of these things before, or you don't have any leather tools, this is a great introduction to some of the basics that you're going to want to have for pretty much every project. This pouch works great for sci-fi, fantasy, D&D characters, whatever you like. It's nice and simple, but you can add details or keep it super basic. It's a very versatile pattern. It can fit on a belt up to three inches thick, but you can also set it on something thinner. It's easy to modify if you want. It's kind of your oyster and however you want to tackle it. If you like this tutorial, consider joining my Patreon. My patrons get access to my tutorials as well as a free pattern drop every single month, and they get it a month ahead of YouTube. So if you like having content like this and are interested in learning and getting more patterns, definitely consider joining. It's not super expensive. It helps me design new content and you get a free pattern and early access to the tutorial every single month. Also, if you like the shirt I'm wearing, consider checking out my Etsy store. I sell digital patterns there. I have merch with my logo on it. And I also sometimes take commissions for physical items. I sell things like traditional moccasins, beautiful acorn bags that are super adorable, and lots of other things too. Please take a look and check it out. But in the meantime, let's get started. Start by printing your pattern. You can find it for sale on my Etsy store or for free every month if you're a patron. Make sure it's scaled to 100%. The pattern overview on the first page will act as a guide for assembling pattern pieces. Use it to keep track of what's what. There are two pouch sizes included in this pattern. The large belt pouch, which is three pages, and then the small belt pouch, which is two pages. I'll be using the small belt pouch for this tutorial, but you can do either. The assembly is exactly the same. For this project, you will need your paper pattern, four to five ounce leather, four medium rivets, a bag closure, a 1.5 millimeter punch, a 3.5 millimeter punch, a setter for your closure, one millimeter waxed thread, two stitching needles, leather shears or a box cutter, contact cement, leather stain, gloves, paper towels, leather oil, an edge beveler, burnishing gum and tool, and a lighter and hammer and masking tape. Pick your pouch size and cut the pieces out. Make sure you don't cut right on the lines. Leave a little bit of a gap. I'll show you why in a moment. And don't worry about making this super pretty. You just need the pieces to be off the piece of paper. Lay the pieces out on your leather. You'll need around two to three square feet for this project. Grab your masking tape. I recommend the cheapest masking tape that you can find. I'll show you why in a second. You want cheap masking tape so you can see the pattern through it. This is your guide for punching holes. Tape it all down. Grab your hole punches. I'm using a 1.5 millimeter for stitching and a 3.5 millimeter for rivets, as well as one I'll talk about later for my closure. 
If you don't have a hole punch, you can use an awl like this one. It's nice and sharp, and you can use it to push a hole into the leather like this. This works fine for stitching and is a great option if you can't afford a punch or don't have one yet. Start with your 1.5mm punch for the stitching holes. You'll need a mallet like this one or a hammer. Line up the punch and give it a good whack. Do this for every hole. If you miss a spot, that's fine. Just go back and give it another whack. Once you get good at this, you can punch several hundred holes in just a few minutes. It really doesn't take that long, and I really enjoy this process. Especially with a good podcast, it's nice and relaxing. Okay, now for the 3.5mm punch for the rivet and closure holes. Since I'm using a Sam Brown button for my bag closure, I need this buttonhole punch for the flap of my pouch. It's the same process as the other punches. Line it up and whack it. Oh, it's totally crooked. That's okay, but you can see the keyhole shape here. On to cutting. You could use a box cutter for this. I got this one from my friends over at Punish Props. It's super nice. Or you can use leather shears like this. I like them better for my hands. Now you can cut directly on the lines of the pattern. This separates the paper and leaves you with a really nice clean piece all ready to go. Make sure you don't forget this line and this little notch here. Give each one a snip. That's what allows this flap to fold under so it can get stitched here to make the corner of your pouch. All right, we have all our pieces. Well done, you're doing great. Before we move on to the next step, you'll want to add this detail to the front. If you want to, it's totally optional. We'll need our awl or a pen or pencil. Line it up using the hole here. And then trace where the piece is going to go. Then we're gonna use the awl to add some texture. You can also use something like sandpaper. This is so the glue has something to grip. Like this. Grab your contact cement. I personally really love barge. And I'll apply mine with some Q-tips, but you can use an acid brush or a metal spatula, whatever brings you joy. Spread a thin, even layer on both pieces. I like to start in the middle and work my way to the edges so I don't get a big splooge. Be as accurate as you can here because the glue will block any stain you add later.
Oh, oh, okay, I guess we're done. Let your pieces sit and dry. You can tell when it's done, when it's no longer tacky to the touch. Line your pieces up carefully, using the hole as a guide. Then give it a firm press. Trim any extra that covers holes. All right, time to take care of these edges. This tool is an edge beveler. We don't need to use it here or here because these edges won't be visible, but along the outer edges and the opening of the pouch, the front detail, if you want, and the top edges of the flap, we can make those look pretty. Line the tool up and apply even pressure at about a 45 degree angle. You're essentially cutting off or beveling the corner. We get some satisfying little curlies out of it. Enhance! You can see how this edge is nice and rounded while this one is sharp. Let's fix that. It's hard to do a consistent cut, but it does get easier with practice, and a nice sharp tool really helps. Curly! Nice! Make sure you do the edges of the front flap, but not the sides of the back, because when you sew these together, the back side of the leather is going to be facing out. It goes together like this. This flap folds down to become the lid, and these sides get stitched to the front. When you have two edges pressed together, beveling them creates a gap, so leave these ones alone. On to wet molding. This is one of the most magical parts of leather to me. It's kind of like heat shaping for EVA foam, but better. You need water and something like a sponge to apply it. I do the back and the front. Dip the sponge, squeeze out the excess, then apply along the areas you want to crease. In our case, we want to do the box corners as well as the outer edges. Using those notches as our guide, fold the leather over and press firmly with your fingers. You can use something like a bone folder here if you want extra crispy corners. All the outer edges get pressed toward the front so that they lay flat for stitching. Fold in on the bottom and press extra firm on that glued detail. Fold those corner flaps in. And finally, fold out the bottom edge for stitching. You can also wet mold the crease for the front flap. Just give it a firm fold and set it like this to rest. Leave everything to dry. I recommend waiting until the next day. Time to die. <clears throat> Sorry, time for stain. Protect your workspace, grab your materials, and protect your hands. Let's get started. I use gel antique for stain because I like it, but you can use whatever you want. 
technically gel antique is more like a weathering wash for leather. It's meant to go over something already stained to antique it, but I really like the color and finish it gives, so I use it like a stain. Live your best life. I'm gonna finish off this nasty old bottle I have. Give it a good shake and then apply with your hands. Rub it all over. Okay, that's uncomfortable. Let's move on. Make sure you get all the edges and any parts that might show from the outside. This next step you can skip if you're using a different kind of stain. Normally you'd buff with a dry paper towel to remove excess, but in this case we're going to dip in some water, very sparingly, and wipe away the excess stain. I love this part because the color just comes to life. Do this for all the pieces and don't be afraid to give it a good solid scrub. It just looks so gross, and then it looks so pretty. It's really satisfying. You can see my crimes here where I have glue spots and the stain didn't quite take. This is why you want to be careful. Grab your oil or whatever polish you want to use. I'm using mink oil. Then follow the same process. Give everything a good buff. This basically protects from water damage and keeps the leather happy. Oh, I should have saved the sexy music for this part. No! Anyway, I'm gonna show you how to finish your edges. You'll need a polishing medium and a burnishing tool. This is optional, it's totally up to you, but it looks really nice. It depends on the final look you want. I'm using tokenol, but you could use plain water or candle wax. I'll demonstrate on this piece. Take your medium and apply it along the edge of the leather. You don't need very much. Take your burnishing tool and pick a gap that's the right size for the thickness of your leather. I'm using this one. Then give it some good friction. The friction creates heat, which basically allows the medium to melt into the leather and creates a nice, shiny, sealed finish. This can take time and is an art in itself to do well and get a really good finish. Let's take a look at what we got here. This is kind of a rough pass, but you can already see the shine on it, especially when compared to the other side. If you decide to do this, I recommend doing it along the flap edges, as well as the bag opening and these side edges. If you want, it's totally up to you. We're almost done, let's add hardware. I have some medium rapid rivets and Sam Brown button. The rivets are two pieces each, a little post like this, and then the little button cap. The Sam Brown button is also two pieces, the top and a screw bottom. Let's start with the rivets. We'll need a hard surface and a hammer. I'm using my tiny anvil and this riveting hammer, but you can use any hammer that has a flat surface. You can tape a piece of leather to it to make it less noisy and protect your project. Grab the post of the rivet and pop it through from what will be the inside of the pouch. That's why we do this before stitching. Put it through the holes and press on the cap. Do this for all four rivets. Grab 
Grab your hammer and give the rivet a few even whacks. It doesn't take much pressure, you just want to flatten it out. See how it's all smooshed down? Let's do the rest to secure the belt loop in place. Nice. Now you can use your finger or a burnishing tool to give the loop some shape so it's easier to slide onto a belt. Now the fastener. I love Sam Brown buttons because they're super easy to install. Just pop the screw post through the hole and tighten the button over it. Use a screwdriver to tighten it the rest of the way. And there you go, a ready to use fastener. It's nice and secure too. Let's finish putting this pouch together. Grab your thread, needles, scissors, and a lighter, because we love fire. Okay, calm down. We're gonna do these corners first. My rule of thumb for measuring for a saddle stitch is three times the length of the area you're stitching, plus a little bit. For a small section like this, I'll do four times the length so I have room for knots and my thingies. Snippy snip, then let's thread this. Leather stitching or book binding needles look just like big sewing needles, but you thread them a little differently. Pop the thread through the eyelet. Then push your needle through the center of the thread. Then you'll have a loop that looks like this. Pull the thread over itself, which gives you a nice secure knot. This keeps the thread in place while stitching. Do the other side, and then we're ready to start. Take both of your needles, and thread them through the first two holes in both layers. Then pull them through. Easier said than done, apparently. Take the bottom or inside thread and put it back through the hole past the top or outside thread. Then pull them tight. That's it. Now you know how to saddle stitch. Repeat till cry. I mean done. First thread through the hole. Second thread back through the same hole.
hold them tight. Enhance! Outer thread. Inner thread. Sir, I'm not asking for much here. There we go. Come on. Then pull it tight. Don't be afraid to be firm here. It's not uncommon for your fingers to be pretty sore after doing a lot of stitching, but keeping it tight is really important. To finish your stitch, you're gonna do a back stitch, just like on a sewing machine. Take the inside thread and feed it back through a previous hole. Give it a snip off camera. Then melt the ends and press them down with the lighter. And that's it, you did it. Now do the rest. This is super fun to do while trying to stay in focus and not get fire too close to my lens. This is probably one of my favorite parts of leatherworking, so we're just gonna chill and stitch for a bit.
trim your thread, seal it with the lighter, and you're done. You've done a really awesome job, and now you have a brand new leather belt pouch. This pouch is perfect for sci-fi, ren fairs, or whatever costume need you might have. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Thank you.